Shalom to everyone. Today we are learning Pirke Avot. This Pirke Avot should be Leilu Nishmat, our dear, dear friend of the family for friend of the family for a long, long, long time, Mr. David Ben Chiyo and Xio. Ruach Hashem Tenichenu Baganed. And Mr. David was big tzaddik. As we said, he would he was making sure that whoever passes away with no income. He would make sure Hevra Kadisha would have enough money to have enough income to go and bury person whoever did not have enough money. He would be very he was very big tzaddik. He was honest worker. He was working in a shoemaker booth with my uncle. I know him since I was child and with family friends for many, many decades. And also Leilu Nishmad, my great grandfather. Rabbi Mishael ben Rachel Banu. Ruach Hashem tenichei hem beganed emechen ilzom namal amen. Okay, we'll continue in Pirkei Avot. Mishnah 15. Mishnah Tedvav. Are you shaking? Good. Shamai Omer. Shamai. We learned before what Hillel Azaken said. Now we're learning what Shamai said. Shamai Omer. Aseh Toratcha Keva. Do your Torah learning. Constant. Constant. Emor me'atva asar be. Speak little, do a lot. Ve've mekabel et kol adam besevel panim yafot. And accept everyone with a smile. Make sure everyone you greet, you greet him with a smile. And that's very important. Today especially. Everyone is a little bit disturbed from after the coronavirus, from the pandemic stress. When you see people, you give them a smile, you make their day, you make their world. And that's very important. One more time. <clears throat> what what Shama is saying? How fish cannot survive without water, Kalal Israel cannot survive without Torah. <clears throat> Even fish has a lot of water in the ocean. When it's raining... There's a new drop of rain falls, fish goes to get that new drop. You should be always open for the new idea of Torah, for the new new pshad, new chidush. And that is the essence of the Klal Israel. And that's, therefore it says, Aset Torah Chakeva, make your Torah constant, constant. Don't, don't, don't be lazy to learn Torah, constantly. Break through, always you should be open to learn more and more Torah, day, night, in the middle of the day, middle of the night. Every time, constant learning. Don't stop your brain from thinking of the Torah. Only then you'll feel the success in your life and only then you'll grow into the highest, highest levels in life. How to be a good person, how to be a good father, how to be a good son, how to be a good husband, how to be a good wife, how to be a good, good worker or boss. Anything has to go hand by hand with Torah. When it comes with Torah, then you're a good human. Everybody wants to be near you. Everybody loves you. Talk little, but do a lot. What does that mean? What does that mean? Some people think, if I talk a lot, I don't need to do nothing. Wrong. Wrong. The main thing in the Torah life, in the life itself, is not to talk a lot. Do a lot. Your son, your daughter, your student... Your friend does not learn from your words. They learn from your actions. Do a lot of actions, but talk little. And the main thing is, even though sometimes the life is not easy for you inside, don't carry it on people. Accept everyone with a smile. Accept everyone with a funny face. That is what people want to see. Somebody comes to your house. Somebody is your friend, somebody is your guest. Always accept people with a smile. Rabban Gamliel Omer, Rabban Gamliel used to say, Aselecha Rav v'istalek mina safek. Make yourself a rabbi and stay away from the doubts. Whenever there is doubt, there's no set mind in life, set mind in Torah, set mind in, like for example, a person goes to college for 20 years, well, who you want to be? I don't know. 
there's no set mind. Why? Because there's no proper guidance. Even in marriages today, unfortunately, when people get married, they don't have proper guidance, they don't know what they're doing. And sometimes they're doing weirdest mistakes in the world, and they think they're right until a day comes, they wake up and they say, oh, sorry, I was wrong. Guidance, proper guidance. Make yourself a rabbi. It doesn't mean make yourself a rabbi who asks you for every small thing, a big checks. No, 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 nothing, nothing. Free. Free person who will give you advice, who will help you, who will do his guidance for free. You ask advice, you get proper <laughs> guidance. Make yourself a rabbi. And stay away from safek. Safek is gimatli amalek. Stay away from doubts. Doubt is a big thing. You, you, you keep Shabbat, I don't know, maybe. You put feeling right, I don't know, maybe. You eat kashrut, I don't know, maybe. Everything is, I don't know, maybe. I don't know, maybe is not life. Make 100%. You're doing right. Of course I'm doing right. Why? Because I saw this Allah says like this. Or this rabbi said like this. And when my rabbi says it, I believe it. Because I know he, he read somewhere. He says it. Now if I ask him where is the source, he's going to show me the source. That is asel kharawi istalek min asafek. Ve al tarbe le asel amadot. Don't give, don't give ma'aser according to your thoughts. Like you have to give ma'aser 100%? You have to give ma'aser 100%. Uh, so person says, no, 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 I think it's like this. There's a story that Wajah Yosef brought in here. There was an old man and he had to become rich in his lifetime. You know, sometimes life is never the same. You know people who were born billionaires. And in the end of their life, or some middle stage of life, they were walking around collecting bottles. And you have opposite. Person, you have very cheap, very born, uh, poor. He had nothing to eat. And suddenly, Hashem gives him bracha, tzlacha. He goes, this is the structure of life. Hashem tests everyone according to his category. Sometimes you're born poor and then you become rich. Sometimes you are rich and happens in life you become poor. This is the life. You have to know, you have to be open for all the gates. Why? You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. <clears throat> so what happened is this man, he was very poor. His father was poor. He had children, like 10 children. Poor family. <coughs> Helen, come sit near me, please. Take a chair. <clears throat> so what happens? One day he's sitting in a field. Eliyahu Anavi comes to him. Eliyahu Anavi says, sir, three years of your lifetime, you have to be rich. When do you want to be rich for three years? From today three years? Or the last three years of your life? He said, you know what? Get out of here. I'm tired. I was never rich. My father was never rich. I'm never going to become rich. Leave me alone. Bye. He kicked out Eliyahu Anavi. Second day Eliyahu Anavi came back. Eliyahu said, sir, you're going to be rich for three years. When do you want to become rich? He says, I told you yesterday to get out of here. Why did you appear again? He said, you know what? Get out of here. Eliyahu Anavi said, if you kick me out the third time, I will never come back to you. So he said, one second. He goes to his wife and says, listen, Eliyahu Anavi appeared. She said, oh, really? Where? How is in the field? And he's asking me that I should become rich for three years. Where should I become rich? From today, three years or last three years of my lifetime? So what happened now? She said, you're crazy? Of course now for three years. Who wants to become rich at last years of his lifetime? Be rich now. When you could walk, when you could talk. Last years of your lifetime, you will be on the walking chair. Who needs that? You got to be, when you're healthy now. He said, you know, fine. He goes to Eliyahu and he says, listen, my wife advised me, I should become rich from today for three years. So what happens now? He says, fine, I give you bracha, put his head, hand on his head, give him bracha, left Eliyahu and Avi. Suddenly his son's running, Abba, Abba. I was hitting with a shovel over here and there's a big hole. Inside the hole there's a big barrel of gold. He says, cannot be. Goes there, he says, it's true. He goes out, calls his wife, says, Esther, look, what is this? She said, listen, all the hands out, I need to get pen and paper and then we'll come back. She comes back, pen and paper in the hands, they take the barrel home. She counts everything one by one. 5,300 coins, 2,000 necklaces, 
1,000 diamond ranks. Everything she writes. And now she says, Chazak Baruch, we won, yes. Exactly 10% goes to Shul. They have to build Shul and they will build Mikvah. So she sends 10% there. And her husband says, you crazy. Why you give so much tzedakah? What is this? She says, Shh, I'm deciding. Three years passed. After three years, Eliyahu came. Eliyahu said, Eliyahu said, Eliyahu said, I'm sorry, sir. Look at this. You were so poor. Now we have factories, big houses, mansions. Come, time came to that I should take back my diamonds and careful, careful, you go back to where you began. Can you give me back my bracha? He said, one second. When you gave me bracha, I had to advise with my wife. Let me go back to my wife and ask her advice. So he comes back. She said, where is Ilyanavi? She comes to Ilyanavi with her notebook. She said, here's my notebook. Take my notebook and see if I gave Maaser and Tzedakah um, my calculation the way I think. Or I put exactly 10 by 10, dollar by dollar, penny by penny. If I did exactly 10 by 10, take from me, fine. Go check different family. Will they, will they do exactly 10% the way we did, Tzedakah? Or not? And if not, give the paper back to us. Give the bracha back to us. He said, one second. He goes to Shamayim. Two minutes later, he comes back and says, Hashem said that bracha should remain in your house for generation to generation. Give them bracha. So what this means? It means any time when you give whatever Tzedakah you give, by 100%, 10%, Hashem gives you bracha 100% for Next, 90% after 10% you give to that. Next. Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel Omed. Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel says, Al shloshad valim haolam Omed. The world is standing on three things. Al adin, on the judgment. Why? When you true judge, when you are judging truthfully, you are building the world. When you are faking judging, you get bribery and money here, you are closing your eyes on the truth and this and that, you are destroying the world. You are putting hole on the foundation of the world. And that is dangerous. Second thing why the world is standing, Allah emet, on the truthfulness. When you say truth, you build Hashem's stamp. Hashem's stamp is made with three letters. Aleph, first letter of the alphabet. Mem, middle letter of the alphabet. And Tav, the last letter of the alphabet. So Hashem's name is emet. When you say truthfulness, you put Hashem's name there. When you lie, Hashem's name is not there anymore. And that where you're making another hole on the foundation of the world and you're destroying the world and that's very dangerous. Next, the third thing, Allah Shalom. The world is standing on peace, Shalom. What means Shalom? Number one means Anawa. Say, who am I? Somebody fought with me, who am I? I'll call apologize, who am I? When you say to yourself constantly, who am I? Question mark, and you put nobody then you'll be able to make peace with everybody in life. Why? Because you never put yourself first. Hey, my respect, it's me, 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 me. There's no me, me, me here. Who am I? I'm nobody. So when a person thinks like this, he'll be able <coughs> to build the world. So if you want to build the world, not only the constructor building the world, not only builders build the world, actually they don't build nothing, they build building. So building the world. The world is huge. And you're building it with three things. Judgment. When there's true judgment, people will be scared to do mistakes. People will be scared to do crimes. Because there's a judge and there's judgment here. And the world will be safe. And on the truthfulness. When you, truth, when you say the truth, you know money is not going to bribe the judge. You're not going to do the crime. And on the peace. When there is peace, there's no crime. And that is very important to know. Whenever you make peace between husband and wife and friends and children and relatives, that is the world is standing on. And this is what keeps the world. Shenemar, as it says, emet, truthfulness, mishpat, judgment, shalom, peace, shiftu bisharech, there should be ruling in your gates. And that is very important. There's many stories to this, but today I want to go a little bit faster by Pirkei Avot in order to make sure Belineder, we finish by Shavuot, Belineder. Rabbi Hanania ben Akashi Omer, Rabbi Hanania 
בין סאנו וקשי וסוסי, רצה הקדוש ברוך הוא, השם wanted לזכות את ישראל, to make כלל ישראל have זכות, to have merit. Therefore, לפיכך, therefore, הלבה להם תורה ומצוות. השם gave us a lot of Torah and a lot of מצוות. He gave us any kind of Torah. Anything you deal with, medicine, Torah, health, Torah, how to use the bathroom, Torah, how to come to shul, Torah, how to get dressed, Torah, how to go to sleep, Torah, how to wake up, Torah, how to eat, Torah, how to say Birkat Amazon, Torah, everything, Torah, everything. Why? Hashem wants us to do even small things, what we need to do, to do what we need. We still get rewards for that, and we still get Olam Abba for that. Torah and mitzvot, and many mitzvot, Hashem got 630 mitzvot, why? Because... By you all day sleeping on a bed, just wearing tefillin, you already got a oh, thousand mitzvot. Why? You wore tefillin, you didn't speak Lashon you didn't fight with anybody, you didn't make janganuzi, you know, you didn't, you didn't do nothing. And that is important. Sleeping at nights, not doing the shiur. Let's go further. Shana Mars it says, Adonai chafetz lema'an tidko yagdil Torah v'yadil. Hashem desired in order to make his truthfulness, tzitko, uh, trustworthy, to be great, Torah ve'adil, and Torah to be spread. Chapter number two, Perek Bet, Rabbi Omer, Rabbi Yudah Nasi, Used to say, What is the proper path that person should be going to? Anything that you do should be pleasant the one for the one who made you. Who made us Hashem. And Tiferet Lo Mina Adam. And that you should do something good that will be good to people. So it means, how should I live in life? That in life should be whatever I, how should I live that Hashem should have benefit from me and people should have benefit from me. Hashem should enjoy from me and people should enjoy from me. How should I do that? My father used to say, if you are good in public but you're not good in house, penny, you're worth nothing. If you're good in house and but you're miserable in public, also penny. You have to be good in here and good in there. When you're good in public and you're good in private, in house, then you are really good. Because the voice of the people, the voice of Hashem, call Hamon, call Hashem. The voice of the nation, people, the voice of Hashem. When you are good to people, means you are good to Hashem. That's very important. And be careful with the small mitzvah, uh, with the weak mitzvah as a strict mitzvah. How are you careful not to do sin with the strict mitzvah? When it comes to weak mitzvah, just to sing something, to talking something, be careful also. Because we don't know the reward of the mitzvot. When you lose mitzvah, look how much profit you would get from that mitzvah. So when you know how much profit you would get mitzvah, you wouldn't lose the mitzvah. Yesterday, we learned from the Sefer Degel Machana Ephraim. And Degel Machana Ephraim says, when a person learns Torah, he takes that letter, and he puts in the letter light, and that light has 630 mitzvot. Every letter, I said, Vayomer, four letters, Vav, Yud, Aleph, Mem, Resh, five letters. And five letters, I put 630 mitzvot, and they brightly light. My small, tiny mitzvot that I say, by saying Psukim, I make millions of mitzvot and I fix them. What if I didn't do that? How much I would lose? I would lose millions of mitzvot. When I know I lost millions of mitzvot, how can I walk so comfortably, comfortably, so happy? No, I lost so much mitzvot. Let me go gain it now. I shouldn't get depressed. That's wrong. But I should be at least cautious to make myself happy and regain whatever I lost. And the reward of the sin... Look as a, how much you would gain if you would do mitzvot for that time. You did sin, you got reward, right? 
So how much you would do, how much you would gain if you do the mitzvah at this time? Thousand times more, no? At least 613 times more. But if you want to be smart and you shouldn't sin, you shouldn't fall into that pit hole, look at three things. If you look at three things, you will not come to sin. Know what is above you. Who is that? Hashem. I see in the ears here. Anything we do today, you have Zoom. Why we have Zoom? To show us how your friend, other thousand people can see you. So how much more in Shamayim people can see you? Here, battery is off. It's finished. It's in physical world. In spiritual world, there's no such a thing. Battery off. There's battery charged for thousands and thousands of years. It's on all the time. And it takes video of our every step. The eye sees. Ozen Shomat. The ear hears. After 120, they'll tell us, look, how much mitzvot you did. How much chesed you did. How many good things you spoke? How many parents, how many couples you married? How many people you saved? How many kids because of you go to yeshiva? How many people because of you learn Torah? All this, they'll show you and you feel, ah, I thought everything I do is lost. No, Hashem shows you everything. And everything you do, Hashem writes down in the book. Everything is written in the book. And of course, if you think from this side, you will never sin again. Why? Because you know Hashem is about. And you know He sees in you. And you know He hears you. And whatever you do is written on the book. So you'll be careful not to sin. I think we'll do one more mission and I'll let you go. Because I see you are getting tired. Rabban Gamliel, Benoshel Rabbi Yehuda Anasi Omer. Rabban Gamliel, son of Rabbi Yehuda Anasi, used to say, Yafet Talmud Torah im Derech Eretz. Beautiful. If you learn Torah and you have Derech Eretz and you have respect. When you learn Torah and you have respect, ah, your Torah shining beauty. Sheyigiyat Shneem Meshkachat When? When you have Torah and you have Derech Eretz, Both of them make you forget about sin. Why? Because you have Torah and you have Derech Eretz. Derech Eretz is one of the very important things in life. When it comes to Derech Eretz today, you complain and say, Oh, you know, Derech Eretz today, forget about it. But really, 100 years ago, when rabbis used to write about Derech Eretz, Hafez Chaim used to write about Derech Eretz, he would say, Look at this young generation. They have no derech heads compared to previous generation. When we say, look at our previous generation. So even previous generation in the Chafetz Chaim's eyes was very weak in derech heads. So if Chafetz Chaim would live in our time, he wouldn't make 15 minutes. Seeing all this, how people respect each other today. Derech heads is one of the keys Essence of Klal Israel, we respect. To adults, we talk as an adult. To children, we talk as a children. To a child, we talk as a child. To a grandparent or to the parent or older brother or uncle, we speak to them as an uncle. Today in America, one word, you. You know, in Russia, at least they had TV, like you know, Ata, Atem in Hebrew. In America, one word, you. Somebody's 50 years old, you. 90 years old, you. Or 10 years old, also you. One word and covers up everything. But really, it shouldn't be that way. Every person should have their inheritance <coughs> to somebody older than him to respect him. Any Torah that doesn't have some income with it, what does that mean, income? Ah. Any Torah that doesn't have income what does that mean, income? For example, at least somebody should be in Kolel, and Kolel should provide some money. 
Because if that doesn't happen and he doesn't have no penny to bring to the house, then eventually he's going to come to steal because he needs to bring some money home. So therefore, this is talking about times when people didn't have kolels that they used to provide money. Today you have thousands and thousands kolelim in Israel and America, the whole world. People have kolel when people send money, they support people who learn Torah. And when people go to Kolel, and Kolel gives them at least five hundred or thousand dollars, whatever they give them, at least this saves them from uh, stop learning. So they should continue learning, and also they will not touch what they're not supposed to be touching. Because if there's no income, then Torah will be stopped and will come to sin, which is stealing. And anyone is dealing with the community, you are skimming my Hashem Shamayim. Upstairs. Anyone is dealing with the community, he should deal with the community, the Shem Shamayim, for the sake of Hashem. Not every time you have to get paid. Not every time you have to get income. Not every time you have to get uh, benefit. There are many times you'll do good job from bottom of your heart and people will spit on your face and say, you don't know what you're doing, you're wrong. And you have to be ready for that. If you really mean for Hashem, this is what is this. Sometimes you will be crazily prepared, <clears throat> working very hard and you're not going to get a penny. That is for Hashem. But when you do something and you demand to get paid, and you demand, uh, this is my, I don't have to be done, and this and that, then it's a questionable. If you're doing for Hashem, or you're doing for your pocket. And I'll tell you one thing, I'll give you one point. I was looking today over what I learned from Aaron Walking from 2001 until 2003. I have all the notes. For two, two and a half years, whatever I learned with him, I have all the notes on Shiurim, on Gemara, Chumash, Mishnah, whatever we learned. I have all the notes. And look, every line is different mafarish, different rabbi. This one rabbi said like this, this Dishon, this Acharon, this Psak Alachan. So much information. And I was looking at it, I said, today, somebody to give like this shoe, he's going to demand $1,000. $1,000 on the shoe. Okay, not on, fine, 800 Not less than that. There's so many mafarshim, so many Alachot, nobody will do less than $800 today. And he did for pennies. And sometimes he didn't even get paid. Sometimes he got his paycheck very late. Still he did it. That is L'Shem Shamayim. This is what person should do. L'Shem Shamayim. V'chol ha'oskimi matzibur. And everyone, whoever deals with the community, you oskimi ma'im L'Shem Shamayim. And one more big point. You want to tell somebody to become religious. Don't insult somebody. Don't break somebody. Don't put somebody down. Oh, you, you don't keep Shabbat. Oh, you don't walk around with keep. Oh, you doing that. Oh, your kids in this. Other. Not allowed to do that. When you insult people, you're making your heart happy. Hashem says, that's not serving me. You're serving your heart. Don't do idol worshiping in front of my eyes, Hashem says. What does that mean? What does that mean? In people's eyes, you whoa, righteous. But in Hashem's eyes, Hashem knows who you are. You got to be honest. You got to be fair. How you don't like to get hurt, to be hurt, you don't hurt others. And do it what should I do that he should get to Hashem close with loving Hashem? That I shouldn't pinch him with my words. That I shouldn't hurt him with my words. Let's say somebody, God made him rich. That's not in your hands. That's not in my hands. That's nobody's hands. Hashem made him rich. Why are you picking him? Oh, you know, you became rich because you steal something. No, you're wrong. Not everyone steals to become rich. Hashem made him rich. Thank you. Oh, his kid's not in the proper path. Speak to him nicely. Explain to him nicely. Somebody doesn't keep Shabbat. You scream at him. Excuse me, look at yourself. 20 years ago, how did you keep Shabbat? 30 years ago, how did you keep Shabbat? Why would you put somebody down? Why would you embarrass somebody? That's not the Torah way. Hashem says, do Torah way. Torah way is being pleasant, being nice, being friendly. When you help people, and you bring them close to Torah, and they keep Torah, mitzvot, let's say somebody did not say Kaddish for his father, and now he says Kaddish for his father, somebody didn't go to Minyan to pray, and now he prays with Minyan, somebody didn't put feeling, now put feeling, the father that he had, or his grandfather, great-grandfather, 
his parents from Shamaim, they'll pray for you. Their zuchud will support you. You will live long. You will get cured. You will not have, will not have problems. And your good proper deed that you do now, it will remain ever. It will remain forever. And you, says Rabban Gamliel, son of Rabbi Yehuda Anasi, I will write a Above your greatness. You will get great reward as if you did it. As if you did the best job. So therefore, what do we learn from here? We learn from here, learn Torah with Derech Eretz. When you have Torah and Derech Eretz together, you will forget about sinning. What's Derech Eretz? Some kind of income. Make certain type of income. When you make some kind of income, you're not count to steal. You have to know how to make parnasa. For example, you rabbi. You learn Torah all day, one hour the day you teach. Daytime you learn, nighttime you teach. Nighttime you learn, daytime you teach. Something. Or, or, or you, you work two hours a day and you learn ten hours a day. This is some kind of income that is their heritage. You know, when a person doesn't work, he comes to do crazy stuff. The crazy stuff makes him pasul from the Torah. For example, he says, listen, I need to make money. Let me go gamble. And he goes to casino, from this casino to that casino, this casino to that casino. That going to casinos make him pasul. Every penny he has in his pocket stolen. Boss doesn't want him to win. And he won. That's stolen money. And what? He always defends and says, I want it. It's me. He's not going to believe in Hashem anymore. And Pasur, he said, you cannot take him as a witness. Number one. Number two, he's going to put pigeons. He's going to say, you bring your pigeon, I bring my pigeon. Let the pigeon fight, my pigeon win. And then I get $1,000. And this is how he makes livelihood. And that is his lifestyle. Where he tortures animals to fight. Or roosters fight. Or pigeons fight. Anything like that. Or, or he's going to say, let's see which pigeon will go and fly and come back. And all these all this kind of things. All this stuff are not properly made income. When you don't work and make proper income, that is a sin, and person becomes pasul le'edut. And whoever deals with the community has to be honest, trustworthy. And Be'ezad Hashem, with this, Shekhinah of Hashem should be all over us, protecting us, and send the Fosh Lema to all the sick people. And we should always have Happy, happy occasions. Be'ezad Hashem. Be'cheni ilatzom anomar. Amen.